You will not see homicide life on the streets tonight, so we can bring you live coverage of the Anita Madden Derby Eve party. We will air homicide on tape delay basis this Sunday night at 12.05 a.m. Glitz, glamour, and gorgeous guests. It's the Madden Derby Eve party, Studio 98. And Hamburg Place is the hot spot for disco, divas, and divine madness. They'll be shooting pics of NBC's Just Shoot Me star, Wendy Malick. You better be nice to Days of Our Lives supervillain, actor Joseph Muscolo. NBC star Fred Savage is going to be working the crowd, while first family stepfather Dick Kelly is stepping out. Here's John Corbett giving a fan some northern exposure. Perennial party guest Dennis Cole is back, ready to begin another string of annual Derby Eve appearances. And no house party would be complete without the world's most famous house guest, Kato Kalin. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tom Kenny. And I'm Nancy Cox. We want to welcome you to the most famous and biggest pre-derby party here in the Bluegrass. And you're going to see it all right from the comfort of your own home. We've got a lot going on here tonight. We'll have some celebrity interviews to bring you, including Coach Tubby Smith and his wife, Donna, plus Joseph Moscolo. You saw him there a few minutes ago, the man you love to hate on Days of Our Lives. We're also going to take you behind the scenes and show you what it takes to put on a party of this magnitude. There are close to 3,000 people here in three party tents that cover almost 50,000 square feet. It is an enormous task, and we think you'll enjoy that. But it's more than just a pre-derby party this year. It's the 100th anniversary of Hamburg Place. And so there are a lot of special events going on because of that. To hear more about that, let's go now to Melanie Glasscock. Tom and Nancy, they are turning up the heat on this disco inferno. As you can see, a little bit of energy in the room tonight, and they're all pushing to the front of the tent to see the who's who of Hollywood. We might mention that Anita made her grand entrance only moments ago in a gold lame dress with a white boa coat streaming to the floor. It's quite a number. We have their best ball gowns tonight. Some of our visitors are decked out in their disco duds. as Sam here. We have outfits over here, the boas, the costumes. It is truly disco fever and actually the man who is born to boogie is standing by live, and that is Cruiser. Thank you, Melanie. And we are out here by the disco dance floor. And when we say this is the biggest Madden party ever, we mean it. 61,000 square feet of tent, which after this event is over with, the Maddens will pack into their Winnebago for their annual Madden family camping trip. This is kind of like covering the floor of a political convention. Only Tracy Cornett, people are a little better dressed here. I don't know if I'd say better dress. More interestingly, let's take a look over this interesting garb. This is a mother-daughter duo here in their 70s paraphernalia. Behind me, guys, is the Bianca Lounge. This is named after uh, ex-wife of Mick Jagger, who hung out a lot at Studio 54. Of course, the entertainment all around, some of which we can't show, it's a little too scandalous. That is a huge part of the tradition of this party. But another aspect of this party that's just as traditional is Anita's dress. And that is, of course, what Melanie Glasgow just referred to. She just made her entrance apparently. Anita's outfit is always fitted with flair, packed with personality, and as cheesy as this may sound, this year it's literally woven with the threads of a lifelong friendship. It's said best friends are one of life's greatest gifts, but when that friend can sew. This is Derby Day. Derby Day. Yeah. And the actual parte is this is one. is this one. She's priceless. In this little bag are um, fingerless gloves and a choker with ostrich feathers and jewels. Meet Terry Derome, oh, best friend of and designer to Anita Madden and her outrageous outfits for three of the last four years. This is ostrich, ostrich that's been feathers. dyed to match the, um, the fabric. Where did you find this? Um, we ordered the feathers and the fabric both from New York. Terry started making Anita's gowns when a week before the big party, Anita had nothing to wear. Started on Tuesday and finished at 7 o'clock on Friday morning. This year's took 120 hours of hand stitching and cost around $500 in materials. It's just Anita. I mean, it's just her persona that's coming through. What I find most amazing is that she's basically going to try this on for the first time ever, mm -hmm. and it's going to fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
No measuring, no fittings, and at no cost to Anita. You do this out of the goodness of your heart. Well, yeah, but she's also done a lot of good things for me, too. So what does this say about Anita? I think it's pretty obvious. This says she's very bold. She is very bold. She feels good about herself. She feels very good about herself, and she has good reason to. She sure does. I can't wait to take a look at her in person tonight. But two other folks who look gorgeous as well, Tom and Nancy. I'm going to toss it back to you guys. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. you know, Anita Madden is not the only person who went all out to look good tonight. She sure isn't. Let's take a look at some of the other glamorous evening wear we've been seeing around the tent tonight. It's so exciting to see the ladies at the entrance of the tent as they get out for the first time. They're so proud to show off their party duds. Well, what does the wife of the national championship basketball coach wear? There you saw Donna Smith. Let's, this is Lexington's versions of Oscar night. All the glitz, all the glamour you can imagine. It's basically anything goes. Someone asked me what to wear tonight, anything goes. There you see Perky the Peacock, Channel 18's mascot. He even wore a tux tonight. Folks are just enjoying themselves. It is their one night to be out on the town, dressed up, looking fine, and they do. This is the place to be seen and see. And as you've seen in this video, some people have gone back to the 1970s since we are saluting disco, and other people have decided to go temporary in Studio 98. Right, you didn't wear your polyester leisure suit in lime green tonight. That's because you wouldn't let me. <laughs> the party is only beginning here at Hamburg Place. We have a lot of coverage coming your way, so don't go away as we continue here with Studio 98. Welcome back to Madden Free Derby Eve Party. The biggest and the best derby party anywhere in the bluegrass. Anita Madden has got this thing down pat. She knows how to do this. And it all started very innocently. You know, back in 1955, Preston and Anita Madden decided to have about 10 close friends over for a free derby dinner. Well, this year, 8,500 invitations were sent out. And as we said, there are close to 3,000 people here tonight enjoying one of the best parties you will see anywhere. And we do at this time want to welcome our viewers over in Louisville watching tonight. You'll take center stage tomorrow. Center stage tonight is right here in the heart of horse country. It's Lexington's turn tonight. You know, you saw some of the glitz and the glamour of the Madden party, but there is a little extra glitter here tonight. And for that, let's go back to Melanie. Tom and Nancy, they say there's no business like show business. Well, there's a show going on tonight, and it's a show of diamonds. Here it's called the Levian Display. $16 million worth on display. Of course, there are guards, armed guards, just waiting for you to pick something up tonight. We're going to ask Ron here of CNH Rail. You all actually got the dis display here. Uh, what does this mean to you all to have this kind of display and this artwork in town? This is just a fabulous event for us to display this for everybody here tonight. Um, this exhibit is such a nice exhibit. We're going to display for two more days at Wood Hill in town at CNH Row. There's a lot of celebrities that come in here. This is the jewelry that they buy. They actually collect these pieces, and we want to have it on display for them tonight. If you'll pull a piece out of the case for me, what goes into this artwork? Look at this pen right here. Can you see this? A car. All this, we have uh, emeralds lining the wheel. This is definitely a craftsmanship, uh, really only by a handful of people today. Our company actually is trying to refurbish the dying art of invisible sets. You'll notice uh, in many of our pieces uh, in the collection, we actually are trying to bring back this dying art. In fact, uh, if we can show her one of the invisible sets right here on Ron's jacket, this is an emerald lobster set in 18 karat gold. You'll notice that each piece is well matched wonderful piece actually has 100 movable parts on this pin. Unbelievable. I know there's also a little butterfly that goes back and forth. It is incredible and they say uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Well, I made two new good friends tonight. I have a birthday coming up also if my husband's out there watching tonight. Nancy, I think Tom might, you know, uh, this might be a good birthday or Christmas idea for you, too. Oh, thanks, hey, you for know, putting, put, thanks for putting the pressure on yeah, me, Yeah, you Melanie. know, Mother's Day is coming up. I think that'd be a great idea, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we are pleased to have with us Jeremy Pivens of the hit show Ellen. Unfortunately, Ellen will be no more. What about all that? How about it? 
all good things, you know. I, I think it was time. I think she did an amazing job, talented woman, and said some beautiful things. And now, you know, we're all move on. Move on. You all broke some ground, though. You must feel good to be a part of that. Yes, indeed. It was. It was actually really cool to be a part of that. Um, since then, you know, we've been down for about six weeks. Since then, I've done my own show that will probably be out in the fall on ABC. And I've got uh, about four movies coming out, so I'm feeling kind of good. Four I'm, movies? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of hard work. Isn't it? Yeah, it is actually. I'm pretty blessed. The gentleman is like waving his fingers. Right waving his fingers. Mean? I don't know. He's waving at you. Hey there. <laughs> what, how have you enjoyed the party so far? It's tremendous. Is this your first experience with the pre-derby bash? Yeah, it is. I feel like I'm peeking on mushrooms. <laughs> uh, look at I've said that. We're live. You guys are married. Thank you. You, of course, are speaking of mushrooms you would use in a dish at home in the kitchen. I don't know what you're saying, but I want to take both of you home. <laughs> oh my I, I swear, to, I really do. Well, thank you you're very so much. You're so right for me. Hey, we are so excited that you're here with us. It's and good to be time here. To be with us. Yes. Hey, who's your derby pick? My derby pick is real quiet, eight to one underdog. Uh, Got to go with the underdog always. Sound like you know what you're doing. Uh, I know a couple things. Horse racing isn't one of them, but I like the underdog. <laughs> what are you doing later? And I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not here. kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm He's not kidding. He's really not kidding. Jeremy Piven of Ellen, thank you so much for thank being here know. with us. Hey, he is uh, just one of the beautiful people who are here tonight. And it's just amazing, though. None of this happens by accident. It takes a lot of hard work to get to looking like this on this pre-derby party. It's serious business, in fact. We're going to place roses all the way around, creating like a crown of roses for the derby, yeah. It's Derby Eve at Monogram Salon. One of the busiest days of the year, but Mickey Binion is not complaining. There have been women here since early this morning. They've had pedicures, they've had manicures, they've had a massage. Now they come downstairs and have their, their face painted and their hair done. And then all they got to do is go home and slip into their clothes and they're ready to go. You don't want it to last a short time. You want to uh, exaggerate it and, and extend it out over several days so you can really get yourself pumped up. When you go to a wonderful party like this, you don't want to look like you do every day. You, you should look special. You should, you should look different. They're going to look very glamorous and they're going to look very sexy. Mm. And that's what I think Anita's is all about. Mm. Yep. I'll see you back at five. Wait a second. Uh -huh. About 50 pounds of bobby pins in those dues by the time they're all finished. Don't go through any metal detectors after you've been to Monogram. All that hard work paid off, though, because there are a lot of great-looking folks here tonight who are dressed to the nines. We've got more coverage of this Madden pre-Derby Eve party, Studio 98, as you see one of seven mirrored disco balls that adorn the three tents here tonight. We'll be right back. In the derby, I really have to look what was the how many races they they raced, you know, through, through the season because it's very early in the season, so I have to see the record before I can tell you. Welcome back to Studio 98 Madden Derby Eve. It's the biggest and best Derby Eve party anywhere, and we are so pleased to have with us Lisa and Walter of CBS's Late Bloomers. Hi. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. You're so welcome. Is this, is this your first time? No, I was here last time, year for the first time, and I said I got to come back every year. They invite me because I had such a great time. What was your Fabulous party? What was your impression of the bluegrass and the way we do derby here? I think it's the best party I've ever been to. Honestly, it's better than my wedding. It was better. It's really, it's the, it's the greatest time. Everybody's here for a good cause, having a great time, looking beautiful. We've got people all decked up. I didn't know it was disco themed though. I'm so upset. You would have worn your polyester. Oh, I've got clothes back from when I was 13, 14, back at my mom's house in DC. Horrible Kiana, red, disgusting. I, I would have worn one of those. But I did wear platform shoes. All right, you got it. You knew those platform shoes would come back into style. Well, you know, when you're a short woman, they're always coming in. Amen. You know, we're all doing a little uh, stargazing here tonight. Who are you hoping to see? I heard, oh my God, I just looked in the monitor and my, you know, last year I wore this dress that they had altered and it, it, they made it too tight in the bust and we couldn't get it zipped up. It took us a half hour. Anita Madden has a great seamstress. We'll introduce you to her a little bit later. Lisa Ann Walter, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Just one of the many stars here at Anita Madden's Derby Eve party. Let's go now to Tracy Cornett. 
with more excitement down on the dance floor. Tracy? I'm not quite at the dance floor, actually. There's not much going on. The dance floor is actually way ahead of me. I'm in front of the bar, and there's a heck of a lot going on here, as you can imagine. I can actually show this woman. She's more dressed than the others. But tonight, we're going to be talking just now about the tent above her. Look at this thing. $2.5 million is what this tent is worth. It was put up by Southeast Tent Company, and it's an interesting story because 10 years ago, they decided that one of their goals was going to be to get the Anita Madden Derby Party, and they got it. They're committed for five years. This thing rents for $75,000 to $80,000, but that's because it's up for an entire month. Photojournalist Bill Wilcox now is going to show us all the work that went into raising this tent for the Madden Party. When do I We've built cages for dancers. We've built platforms for dancers. We've built bars and stages. Yeah. It's total whirl. We just get out here and whirl all the time. Spear balls, glitter, leaves, two before nails, screws. We hang fabric, we staple, we staple, we, then we staple some more. We're in this mad whirl for Derby. Back with another one of those block rocking beats. Voila, we're done. 41,000 square feet under this baby. It looks like to be the size of about two football fields. And taking up a tiny little sliver of it is our cruiser somewhere in this tent. Tracy, we are worth <laughs> the hardest working crew here at the Madden Derby party. These are the folks from the Radisson Plaza Hotel who are the servers and the preparers of tonight's food. Now, while the menu preparation began weeks ago, actual food preparation began on Tuesday. As a matter of fact, those in the know received this 20-page memo on food preparation, scheduling, recipes, and how this whole back tent would be laid out. And you can see some of the chaos behind me. On Wednesday, I went to the Radisson to visit with the executive chef there, Edward Valente. And I've always wanted to say this on television. Hey, Grandpa, what's for supper? Uh, we have chicken stacked up to the ceiling here. Ed, how many chicken have given their lives for this party? Uh, 3,100. What do we have here, Ed? Okay, we have here uh, tomato Florentine, they call it, mm -hmm. which is just a stuffed tomato with cream spinach. Let's On this see. rack, we got 900. We'll have another 1,200 here. We'll have about 3,100 uh, tomatoes. You've probably heard of this before, but um, Vegematic? Yeah. You know, the amazing product from Ronco. <laughs> Seems like that would be uh, a lot, lot easier than this woman doing it by hand with a small paring knife. Yeah, but it's the, the quality is not as good. Take a break, ma'am. 22 cases. 22 cases. And what are you going to do? Are they going to be baked? Uh... We're going to steam them part of the way, and then we're going to roast them in the oven. Roast them in right the oven? Right there at the tent. OK, so we're not doing julienne fries this year? No. <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> no, we'll do There's about 6,500 potatoes here. There are some people that eat, but then there are other people that, that they don't eat much. They're too busy drinking, too busy drinking socializing, and socializing, dancing. Watching, watching all the people. They're not really eating. Is this kind of a thankless job? Because not too many people are going to know, first of all, that you prepared the meal, and they're not going to come back later and say, boy, that was a fabulous dinner, Ed. Well, I hope it's a fabulous meal, but, uh, but you won't they're, hear they're, they're there to socialize. But you're not going to hear much about the dinner. No at this sort of thing. No, not unless something goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your broadcast team is eating tonight right here. Pigs in a blanket. Nice job, sir. What is that swimming in? Oh, that is swimming in <laughs> smoky Tennessee barbecue sauce. Yes, sir. Nothing but the finest for Channel 18. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> Do we have colored toothpicks or just those white ones? Uh, we got colored. Nothing but the oh, finest. Oh, see, I like, that. I like to have my the color assortment. On nothing, the, on the nothing but the finest. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, backstage, Tom and Nancy, you should have seen Cornette and Glasscock just wolfing those suckers down. You know? <laughs> Couldn't get enough. <laughs> 
Nothing like pigs in a blanket, I guess, huh? Here's a familiar face. Of course, you know him as Stefano DeMera on Days of Our Lives, but he has a real name, Joseph Mascola, who has joined us here tonight. <laughs> people are yelling, Stefano, Stefano, what's it like to try to do a job where people, you want people to hate you? No, no, I don't even think of it in those terms. I just want people to enjoy themselves. And Stefano is a fantastical kind of guy. He owns the world, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> but no matter what he's done, I have to take this back with me <laughs> because this gives me all kinds of ideas. This is incredible. People talk about Hollywood, but this is a gender bender that I, it's amazing. I mean, could you imagine the plots you could come up with oh, with a setting like this? I mean, absolutely. if John Black walked in right now, who knows what could now, happen? First thing I would do is put him in a dress. That would be it. In a wig. In a, in a wig, and have him get up on one of the stands here. This is magnificent. Um, Anita does it upright. Yes, it? and I, I think I said it this afternoon, but if she didn't hear it, wherever she is out there, thank you, the tulips are gorgeous. Well, let me ask you this. We all are dying to know what the next diabolical scheme is going to be from Stefano. Can you give us a hint, just a little teaser? Well, okay, I'll give you a hint, all right? <laughs> But the character of uh, Vivian and Kate are going to be two people that he's going to use. I think that's her now, isn't it? That yes. is Vivian. Yeah. Oh. Even without my glasses, and on this side of the back. <laughs> you are spinning your web as we Oh, speak. yes, right. You have to realize that Stefano always has an agenda. That's why he plays chess, so he can stay one or two moves ahead of everybody. Well, we love you the moves you know this guy here? I know this guy. Huh? cute. I mean, yes, he is. Well, <laughs> at this party, I'm afraid to say he's cute. Thank you but, so much okay. for being with us tonight. Thank you. And have fun at the Derby. Good luck and congratulations on your son. God bless you. Thank you, Joseph. Okay. okay. Stefano Demera. <laughs> much more to come from Studio 98 right after this. What do you think of partying Lexington style as, com as compared to partying a, L.A. style? you got to have a lot of stamina here, honey. Welcome back. You know, you could call this a party with a purpose, and that's what we want to talk about now. Absolutely. And for that, let's go to Tracy Cornett. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Are we here? Tom and Nancy, thank you very much. Yeah, sorry, but it's extremely loud right here. If you can pan over, Michael. We've got some dancing girls up here doing their thing. This is the main entrance to the tent. And let's come on back and change our focus, because this truly is a party with a purpose, ironically enough. It doesn't seem like it, but this party raises over $100,000 for the Bluegrass Boys Ranch. It's a cause that Anita Madden has supported since the 60s. It used to be a home for dependent, neglected kids, but has recently changed focus to a scholars program, helping, well, disadvantaged children get a fresh start at life. As soon as they get home from school, they have a few minutes for free time, you know, have a snack, and then they play a little pool or basketball. And then you or, crack the whip. And then you crack the whip, and it's the <laughs> automatic, mandatory study hall. Okay. It runs like clockwork. And for 30 years, it's worked like a charm for Bobby Joe Gwynn and his Bluegrass Boys Ranch. Is that your good move, Bob? As head of the scholar program, he's witnessed how structure, 30 acres of peace and quiet, and the full-time attention of three workers. I love them. They're just, like my, they're just like my family. I mean, I look at them as my children almost. Can transform kids with little chance. How many of you guys didn't do homework before you came here? <laughs> All of you? you? Into scholars with a future. I'm going to be an architect. Professor. Somewhere in the medical field. Engineer. Doctor, scientist or something. Kevin, Derek, Bob, Robert and Julius are five of the 30 applicants selected every year for a three-year stay at the ranch. How many of you guys just were not excited about coming here Me? at the very beginning? Uh, you? <laughs> you were Me like, too. Well, how many of you are happy now? Me. Me. Yeah. I was thinking about leaving last year, but then I realized how this would really help me. In fact, the ranch has already helped 80 to 85 percent of its graduates earn full rides to some of the most prestigious prep schools in the country. You bring in a child here then who's just struggling and boom, within three years, 
is equipped enough to go to a prep school and succeed? You say boom, but it's not that easy. <laughs> and you know, we've had a lot of successes, but we've had some failures too. Who, who's at your assembly today? And I hope to see them succeed, and I hope that I just make a little ripple, of a positive ripple in their life. I know this isn't the place to get teary-eyed, but I tell you, doing that story really did make me well up because these children are doing so, so well. I just ran into their house mom and house dad here a few minutes ago, Bobby, Joe, and Ann, and they say hi to you boys at home who are watching. Congratulations. Keep it up. You guys are doing great. And so are you, Tom and Nancy. We're going to toss it back to you now. Thank you, Tracy. We are joined right now by Henry DeFiatkowski, otherwise known as the Count of Calumet. This is an accomplished businessman and horseman who rescued bankrupt Calumet Farm from the auction block, has preserved it, and is returning it to its racing glory. And I know you must enjoy a night like this in the heart of horse country. I do indeed. And I, I walked through the property today and again reaffirmed myself that there's no other place as beautiful as Calumet. Well, certainly Calumet has a rich history this time of year. It's home to a record eight Kentucky Derby champions the familiar devil red and blue silks, and I know that you continue to work to bring the farm back into prominence. Um, we are trying our best, and, uh, and I dare say that someday, today will be our day to, to probably win a triple crown. Well, this is a man who knows what it's like to stand in the winner's circle of one of the classics. I think about back to Conquistador Cielo and the Belmont Stakes, and I know you'd like to get back. I since then had done the connection also, the Belmont Stakes. I like to get back this time with Calumet Colors. Do you have a derby pick for tomorrow? Well, the, because of the condition of the track, it's very difficult. Uh, very difficult. Uh, but I believe that, uh, anyway, I don't... <coughs> It is a tough, it's a tough field. This. It's a tough field to pick. It's very balanced very, with 15 very, horses. Very the old friends of mine, I wish them all the rest. We hope everybody has a safe trip. Thank you. The Count of Calumet, Henry Defiatkowski. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our party coverage continues in a moment. Blitz, glamour, and gorgeous guests. It's the Madden Derby E Party, Studio 98. You are looking at a live picture of one of the most famous and coveted trophies in all of sports. This is the Kentucky Derby Trophy, and yes, that is an armed guard you see behind it, where they take, they go everywhere where this trophy does. In fact, the trophy, believe it or not, came over tonight in its own limousine, if you can believe that. Some of the statistics, oh, it's, it's valued at $67,000. Again, two armed guards follow it everywhere that it goes. It's handmade of 14 and 18 karat gold, sits on a solid jade base, 22 inches tall, 56 ounces, not counting the base, and it is coveted by every horseman in the world. It is gorgeous, and it is the big prize tomorrow and every first Saturday of May. We're really honored to have this display here with us tonight and give you a chance to see it. Well, you know, we talked about the hostess of all hostesses, Anita Madden. We're waiting for her in just a few minutes. You're going to see the big dress, what we've all been waiting to see firsthand. But this got our Veronica Duca excited this week, thinking about um, Anita's dresses. You know, Anita always comes out with something flamboyant, uh, uh, just fabulous, and sometimes scandalous. So Veronica started tiptoeing through Anita's closet and looked into her party past. Welcome to Veronica's closet, where the derby fashions are big, beautiful, bold, bodacious. Yes, I said bodacious. And unique, to say the least. Veronica. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> well, I got some funny old clothes. I went to the attic. I did wear this to one derby party, 
it was delivered to me, just as most of my clothes are, just sort of before I put it on, went to the party, didn't notice anything about it, and walked in. I heard someone say, oh, you can see through it. I said, oh, my heavens. And this dress, I, I wore the weekend that Larry Hagman was here. You remember JR? Yes. And he and his wife were here, and they were so much fun. Now, this one goes uh, way, way back. It is sort of barely there. Man. But you've got one well, of those I look great at body these things, though, and I think, did I really go out in that? <laughs> <laughs> a day of glamour can really wear a girl out. We saw Veronica a little bit earlier. She made a pretty nice selection from her own closet front for tonight. We'll be seeing Anita Madden a little bit later and talk to her about the cause behind this party that is so dear to her heart. Studio 98 continues in a moment. Success. Hybrid Springs Big Blue Swish. It's all over town. Basketball here is on the campus. It, it, it's a way of life. Really, it is. From a man who should know, basketball is yes. a way of life here in Kentucky. Yes, some fond memories. We wanted to throw out a few of the statistics. We've been talking about the enormity of this party and the work that goes into putting it on every year. Of course, people do have a sit-down dinner here at the Madden Party. It's not just coming in with dinner, drink, and dance. It is a very formal dinner. And in order to do that, the food is prepared in a tent and trailer right here on site. There are 80 people who work in the kitchen, 150 bartenders and waiter captains, 150 hostesses, and 500 servers trying to keep everybody happy. It's unbelievable just coordinate all the people who are working at this party, much less all the guests who are here. 3,000 people having a fantastic time, and Melanie Glasscock's right in the middle of them. Right in the middle, or right tucked away in the ladies' lounge. Hello, I wish we had enough cable to show you all of this. It is absolutely gorgeous. There are velvet benches, and I want you to see the ceiling and a chandelier in the ladies' restroom. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? And the white tinsel hanging from the ceiling. This is where you go to get fluffed and puffed. They have everything here. They have tattooing. And yes, they have little gentlemen over in the corner. You can't see them right this minute. Maybe it's probably a good idea. Don't tell their mothers, but they don't have their shirts on. Shh. Right now we're going to talk just a little bit with Martha and Angie. I want you to know you all have your shoes on. What are you thinking? This is the place where do you kick it off. Well, we're still resting, though, is the problem. We haven't been able to sit down. This is the only place we can sit. Only place. It's a little crowded, isn't it? Mm, it is a little crowded. This, what about this bathroom? This restroom, this is kind of frou-frou, isn't it? You know, I've decided this is the third year that I've been to the party, and the women's bathroom is the place to be. This is the place to relax and sit back and enjoy the whole party because this is fun. And this is where they're catching up on all the gossip I've oh, never seen. Most and definitely. there are men in the women's restroom. I actually Could, bought my fiancé into the women's restroom. Can you believe that? What about the decorations? I mean, they, they do a lot of planning, yes. and this is part of the planning also, yes. isn't it? The decorations are unbelievable. I mean, the minute you walk into the place, it's just, you're starstruck. I mean, it's just the most expansive, just everything is wonderful. She goes way out, and it's well worth it. Mar we've lost Martha over here. Martha, have you seen any of the stars this year, or Not do you yet. come for the stars? Not really, no. I don't really look for them, but... If they happen to come up and want to talk to me, that's fine too. <laughs> well, you know, this is this is for a wonderful cause, the Bluegrass Boys Ranch. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Anita works really hard to entertain her guests. And I donate to the, the Bluegrass Ranch all the time um, because it is a good cause. And I think this is a great party. Everyone has a lot of fun. And this is a great place to uh, relax and enjoy oh, yeah, and kick it up. Time. Well, thank you all for letting me sit on um, the little gossip session here. Thank you. <laughs> Nancy, I may not come back out of uh, out of this restroom. It really is kind of cozy. <laughs> Tell you what, it's nicer than where I live. We are joined right now by UK Associate Athletics Director Larry Ivey, who knows a thing or two about being at big celebrations. He had one in March when the Cats brought home another national championship. This is a little bit different vein, though, isn't it, Larry? It really is, Tom. But I tell you, the tradition of Kentucky basketball, the Madden party, is just the same. I've been coming here 25 or 26 years, and it gets better and better every year. 
I understand this may be the last one she's going to have, so I'm happy to be here. Yeah, there are vicious rumors to that effect. We'll have to ask the hostess herself coming up. Do you have a derby pick for tomorrow? Well, obviously, uh, I hope Rick's horse, Hallery Hunter, uh, can get the job done. He ran a great race in the Bluegrass Stakes, and uh, I think the added distance, the added eighth of a mile, will be set up perfectly for him. If he gets a little racing luck, I think he can get it done. And he certainly has a trainer who knows a thing or two about winning Kentucky Derbies in Nick Zito. He sure does. Uh, Zick knows how to get his horse ready for the Derby. I think he's done exactly what he should do with Howry Hunter. And uh, as I say, if he gets a little racing luck, he may get it done tomorrow. That's UK Associate Athletics Director Larry Ivey with us tonight. We'll be back in just a moment. Elegant. Welcome back to the most glamorous night in Kentucky. It's Studio 98 Madden Derby Eve party. And as we said earlier, it is a party with a purpose. And more on that, let's go to Tracy Cornett. Yes, it is a party with a purpose, guys. But I have to say, Fred Savage has walked in the door and has created quite a hubbub. But we've got two people almost as famous. This is the house mom and house dad from the Bluegrass Boys Ranch. And you want to say hello? Yes, I want to say hi to all the boys, Derek and Rob and Julius and Kevin and Bob. And I also want to say hi to my mammy and granddaddy in Columbia. Kentucky. I love you. The Bluegrass Boys Ranch being the purpose that this party is here in the first place. And Bobby Joe Gwynn has been a part of it for 30 years. That's You're almost right. as famous as Anita at this party. No, not hardly, not hardly. <laughs> Never can stand up to that. <laughs> now, now, the boys stay in your home for three years and prepares them to really get entrance into the in the most prestigious prep schools in the country. And then, where does that end up putting uh, them on those? The fortunate thing, after going to the prestigious prep schools, that enables them to get into some really great colleges. We have boys applying to Stanford, Morehouse University, George Washington University, and the list just goes on and on. So it's a great stepping stone. And you guys do wonderful work there. I want to thank you. And uh, now we're going to move on to Herman Hall, who has spoken recently with a success story in the making. At 15, Doug Pinson says he owes his early successes to the boys' ranch. He lived here for three years and started high school at Bryan Station. Now Doug's a 10th grader at the prestigious Hill Preparatory School in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. There's no way my dad could afford it, and there's no way that I could have advanced as much morally and mentally and physically as I have out here. It's been such just a great thing. Doug looks at the ranch like a home away from home. His grades are better than they've ever been, and all the credit comes right back here. You know, you come here and you sit around and eat dinner together, and you all have chores, and they help you with your homework, and they teach you some discipline. Through the ups and downs together, he says it's easy to understand why the boys here become like brothers. It's like a bond. It's somebody that you can hold on to. Like when you're needing a friend, you can count on one of these people to be there. And the counselors who run the place are like parents. Like my dad, he doesn't have a phone. If I want to convey something to my dad, I'm usually calling here. And plus, like when I need something, I call her, and they can supply me with it. That you know, the, the, these people out here are willing to give up. They give up a lot of stuff for us. They really care for us out here. And after he gets that degree he wants from Yale, Doug says he won't forget where his help came from. Whenever I can pay back the ranch, what I can, I'm sure I will. In Lexington, Herman Hall, 18 That's Action well. News. It's absolutely a wonderful program. We should be very proud of it for all of us here in Lexington and all of Kentucky. Now, Cruiser, I'm going to take it to you, and I'm sure you're going to do something a little less serious. We're in the uh, cigar bar. This is the first year that they've tried something like this, and it's adjacent to the VIP room. In fact, over here, we can sneak a peek at Wendy Malik from the hit NBC series, Just Shoot Me. Wendy, you don't impress me as a cigar smoker, dear. Nina, of course, would probably smoke just about anything. No, I don't smoke cigars. It's one of the few bad habits I never took up. Congratulations on the success of the show, but i got to ask you, every now and again, you just want to slap David Spade around a little bit. <laughs> well, every now and again, I do slap David Spade around a little bit. Uh, you know, the odd thing is, the real David is about is, is 180 degrees different from from the character you see on the screen as you could possibly imagine. He is, I should never tell this, he probably is so pissed at me for saying that, but he's, uh, 
He's extremely dear. Yeah. Very sweet, sweet man. Real quick, there's a lot of uh, speculation about who's going to get Seinfeld's spot on Thursday night. You want it, yes or no, or would you rather be oh, around know. around that time? I think being around that time is a really enviable position. That time is, I mean, people are going to be under an amazing amount of scrutiny. Right. And Seinfeld is Seinfeld. It took them years to cultivate that audience and get that tight and that good. And, yeah. you know, we may at Sunday end up being a very tight, wonderful, huge hit, but we're still little fledglings by comparison. Yeah. The thing people have to remember is just because you get 9.30 doesn't mean you're going to inherit that entire audience. Right. Everybody's going to be saying, yeah, so yeah. what can you do? But there's a guarantee to get in that audience, and that's that cigar look. Can you give me that cigar look again? That, that, yeah, see, you give them that on Thursday night, and you got must-see TV. Wendy, thank you. Continued success. Thank you so much. And good luck on the, uh, on the show. Somebody get this lady a cigar over here. Oh, well, of course, they're going to bring her plenty of liquor. And... Right behind Kathy over here, if you want to see the ventilation in the cigar bar. Hey, Kathy, move over there a little bit, my dear. Look at that. There's your ventilation system right there for the cigar bar. They're sparing no expense. It's a little uh, $9.99 electric fan. Back to you, Tom and Nancy. Hey, whatever works, you know. Exactly. It's a tent. What do you want? <laughs> if we see Nina with a cigar next week, we're going to know she got the idea from Cruiser. <laughs> That's right. Much more to come from Studio 98 right after this. Robin, one of the real people of eight. Welcome back to the Madam Derby Eve party. I see somebody peeking oh, around the corner. Anita Matt. Anita Matt. There she is, folks. What a dress. Wow. Thank what an you. Outfit. Thank you. I wanted to be here with the trophy. Can we see the Derby trophy? Oh, is it great? Gorgeous. What an honor to have that here tonight. Oh, it's it's a thrill. I, and I know everyone here would love to win it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> That will be awarded tomorrow in the winner's circle at Churchill I, I Downs. I to say, if you're if you're real quiet, you can have your fa you can play your favorite trick as you rock and roll during your victory gallop. <laughs> so that's a little hint of who's going to win tomorrow. In that order? Perhaps not, but it's just a little something to think about. I was wondering if you were going to. My sister the whole has 15. all the answers. She's the handicapper in the family, so. <laughs> Anita, what would a, uh, what would one of your parties be without Dennis Cole? Well, it would be impossible. We couldn't do it. But I missed last year, and I tell you, it just it broke my heart. But it's so great to be home and to be welcome back again. I didn't think I'd get invited back. Well, absolutely. What do you think? You vowed that this would be the biggest and most exciting party ever. I think you did it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. For 25 that. years, it's gotten bigger and better and better, and it's all for the. Bluegrass Boys Ranch, you know, and that's the greatest thing in the world that the people turn out and do it. And God bless Anita and Preston for doing this for the young boys, you know. We have to ask you, Anita, all night long we've been hearing rumors this is the last one, this is the last one. Will we have a big derby party next year? In the middle of all these preparations, you feel like definitely that might be the case, but I don't know. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that gorgeous pin you are wearing tonight. Just beautiful. Oh, isn't it beautiful? I, I think if you stop by the booth up here, you can probably get, well, maybe they'll come I, over and take this one off of it. I set up all last night making that. It was just so difficult. Anita Madden and Dennis Cole, we thank you <laughs> thank very you much. God bless. We want to give you an insight into what's coming up on 18 Action News at 11. All right, thanks a lot, guys. We're going to show you the party scene in downtown Lexington on this Derby Eve. It looks a lot different than the glitz and glamour at Hamburg Place tonight. We're also going to take you to the biggest Derby Eve party in the Derby City. Stewart says odds are looking better for a dry run for the roses. And Ryan Lemon just returned from Churchill Downs with highlights from Oaks Day. The Phillies ran a great race, and you're going to see it at 11. Until then, let's take it back out to Studio 98. You know, a lot of people think the history of the Madden party dates back just to the late 1970s in the form that we know of now. But the place where this party is held, Hamburg Place, dates back to the late 1800s. And the Maddens are celebrating something very special this year, the 100th anniversary of success here at Hamburg Place.
Hamburg Place was founded by John E. Madden in 1898. This is the farm's namesake, his champion two-year-old, Hamburg. The money he made from selling the horse was used to buy Hamburg Place. Madden paid $30,000 for 235 acres. That grew to a 2,000-acre show place where champions were bred and born, and the rich and famous were entertained, like the great statesman Henry Clay. He was married here in the main residence. John Madden came to be known as the Wizard of the Turf. He built Hamburg Place into the most well-known and successful breeding farm in the world the first part of this century. How successful? He bred six Kentucky Derby winners, five Belmont Stakes winners, and the first Triple Crown winner, Sir Barton, who swept the classics in 1919. John Madden's pride in his accomplishments didn't just come from his success with horses. He was even more proud of the people, the men that he brought into the thoroughbred industry, as he was of the horses that he developed. He thinks he developed some great sportsmen. Many of those sportsmen considered Madden an industry genius. He had the opinion the genius was 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration. John Madden died in 1929, but his legacy lived on in his grandson, Preston Madden, who took over Hamburg Place in 1956 at the tender age of 21. But he enjoyed almost immediate success. He carried on the farm's tradition of breeding and racing champions. There was T.B. Lark in 1961. And then the farm's seventh Kentucky Derby winner, Ali Sheba in 1987, who overcame two near falls in one of the greatest stretch runs in Kentucky Derby history. An unbelievable trip for Ali Sheba. In the 42 years since taking over, Preston Madden has faced challenges his grandfather never did. <laughs> Development. The interstate split the farm in half. Fast food restaurants, gas stations, and motels are the farm's neighbors now. But as the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. The Maddens sold off part of the farm that wasn't used for horses. This is what it looks like now, with more to come. But Madden says the breeding and racing success of Hamburg Place during the first 100 years will continue for at least the next 100 years. How would you like to be remembered in the thoroughbred industry? I would aspire to be remembered as having been a credit to the thoroughbred industry. I'd like to think, in fact, that I have been a credit to the thoroughbred industry. So nice, just part of the rich history of Hamburg Place. 18 Action News is next. Blitz, glamour, and gorgeous guests. It's the Madden Derby Eve Party, Studio 98. Welcome to Studio 98, the Madden Derby Eve party on the grounds of historic Hamburg Place. I'm Nancy Cox. And I'm Tom Kenny. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be going until 12.05, and at that time, you will see The Tonight Show with Jay Leno in its entirety. But until then, we've got beautiful people to show you and a lot of fun things that are going on here. You know, every party that Anita Madden puts on before the Derby has a theme. This year, we go back to the popularity of the disco in the 70s. Studio 54 in New York City was one of the hottest. They've transformed three party tents here tonight into Studio 98. This is also the 100th anniversary of historic Hamburg Place. So along with the disco theme, it's a huge birthday celebration as well. 3,000 people under these huge tents having a great time. And one of them is Tracy Cornett. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we're enjoying the boogie fever going on here. Okay, thanks very much. Look at this guy. This is just one of the many outrageous outfits of some of the guests here tonight. What's your name? Steve. Steve, you better uh, go primp your wig. I'm going to show him a few other things around here. Thank you very much for doing the hustle with me. Behind me, guys, is the Bianca. That is the major disco room of this tent. Of course, we've got the disco ball above it. It's packed like sardines back there, but that's where you really see those decked out in 70s garb. A lot of other folks in typical formals, but I am told by everyone here, it's practically unanimous that this is the best Derby E party there's ever been here, and it's partially because the theme is so conducive to it. Now, coming up in the next half hour, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff, including an interview with Fred Savage. 
who is so sweet, I have to tell you the story. He called me after our interview in January to tell me thank you for sending a copy of the story to him. That's the kind of guy he is, and you're gonna talk to him a little bit later. Plus, you're gonna meet the band that is rocking everybody's world here tonight. But meanwhile, let's go over to Melanie, who's rocking probably a whole other area of this tent. Melanie? Tracy, I tell you, the night is still young. It may be 1130, but the limos are still rolling in and the music just cut off, but the dancers, there they go. They have not missed a beat. Their steam is still rolling on. We might mention we've seen a lot of interesting costumes here tonight. And I can say costumes because we're talking about disco. Right now, I want to bring these folks in. They have worked extremely hard on their outfits this year. We have Rita and Larry. How did you all put this together? I like the top hat. Just looking like myself. In last minute. That's all. This is a borrow from a friend named Charlie. Okay. Y'all having a great time, right? Oh, fabulous, yes. yes. And, and a derby pick. What horse? Oh, I wrote it down. Something like I'm not sure how to say it. Chiquito. Chiquito. Hallery Hunter, Bettino's horse, Indian Hose. No, no, no. Chiquito's it. Okay, you're having a great time. Fun party. Okay, stay out of trouble. Thank you, Anita. Anita. She's a great party host. She really is. Thank you. And uh, Cruiser, I'm sure you're having a great time, probably into mischief right about now. Melanie, I wish I was having a good time, but they put me to work back here in the kitchen once again. I'm in the busiest part of the kitchen right now which is the bar area. Since they've quit serving food, they've put me to work on filling up some ice glasses. I'm helping Steph out over here. Come here for just a second, Steph. How long you been at this today? I've been at it since about six. Since about six o'clock? Right. Look at that camera there. Now, if you had dark hair and you had two strands of hair sticking up in the back, I think we got alfalfa from the Little Rascals right it. over here. Another celebrity we have spotted in the kitchen, ladies and gentlemen, back here. These folks are working hard back here. I've been trying to help out. But you can't do margaritas. What are some drinks you can't do? That we cannot do? You can't do a margarita. You can't do anything with right. an umbrella in it, right? Right. We can't do any margaritas. We can't do any uh, martinis back here. Martinis, yeah. Uh, any daiquiris. Yeah, you're just slipping beer in Maker's Mark, right? Maker's Mark. Got it. Scott? Got it. Got it. And, of course, we do drink responsibly here. This is the hardest working crew in the entire Madden party. And this party is legendary, legendary for people like these. Give yourselves a hand over here, the people who, who help out all the party guests and make them comfortable. There are a lot of forces behind this, this party, and Robin Rab Rabbit recently spent some time with the lady in Anita's kitchen that Anita has counted on for decades. I'm just picking tomatoes out to ball off. Uh... Something's always simmering in the Madden family kitchen. Today, it's fried chicken for derby lunch baskets, cucumber and tomato sandwiches for Anita's house guests. Now we just got to brown it off a little. And a turkey for everybody who's working on the derby party. Virginia Shelby's doing it all. I don't go by a cookbook, <laughs> don't go by no recipes. She's been working for the Maddens for 42 years. In fact, Virginia cooked all the food for the first Derby Eve party. There were 25 guests, but that changed. Every year they would add more and more. And when I got to about 2,000, I just told them I just couldn't do it anymore. It was just getting out of hand. Virginia's job was turned over to professional caterers years ago. Do you miss it at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> now when, uh, when Virginia goes out for a meal, she loves to get a Rally's Big Buford. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she goes out for a steak. She likes to get a nice big steak for herself. Steph, how long will you guys work? Well into the morning, right? About 4.30. About 4.30 this morning is when you guys will finally shut down. Right. You guys are doing a terrific job. She's not going to let me leave, Tom and Nancy. I said, oh, look, our, our little segment back here in the kitchen is over. I need to move on. But I, I can't leave. They need me too badly back here. So my part's done for the night. Good night. I'm glad somebody's uh, getting some work out of Cruiser. You know, with Cruiser back in the kitchen, that makes 81 people back there. They've come a long way since just Virginia was making all the food, plus 150 bartenders, 150 hostesses, and 500 people here just to serve the food. There's also a lot of people here who are having a lot of dance fun, and we're going to check them out and some celebrity interviews when we come back. Welcome back to Studio 98 Derby Party Eve here at
that, Anita Manson, we've got a very familiar face here. This is Fred Savage, currently of working on NBC, but we know him as Little Kevin Arnold. Oh, Little Kevin, that's oh, right. Oh, man, what's it like to be doing your first adult role now? It's, it's great. It's great. It's a lot of fun to have the opportunity to come do that, you know? You always say when you're playing a younger guy, people say, oh, you're going to get typecast as a young guy. And, um, you know, it's nice to know that people are kind of interested and want to kind of hire you and see what you're doing now that you're older. It's kind of nice. And you're doing a great job, obviously. Uh, well, you know, we're getting there. I'm getting there. But, uh, you know, we get a chance to come back next season, kind of see how it turns out. Take it a season at a time. Now, we know that you're thrilled to be at your first Anita Madden pre-duty You know what? I am very excited to be here. I was, I got, oh, you don't even want to know. <laughs> My plane was all delayed. Oh, I had such a nightmare at the, at the, at the airport. But even but, though this is good for you, you recently lived out a lifelong dream by winning on Celebrity Jeopardy, right here, ladies and gentlemen. Won. Even though you do need to bone up on your rivers a little bit, but you still <laughs> won. Rivers, I was terrible at rivers. <laughs> oh my God, I, oh, I hate rivers. What was that little narrator voice in your head giving you all the answers? Though? That's what it was. You cheated from the Wonder Years, didn't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> that was all, you know, going to college. That was okay. all the stuff I learned back at school. Well, speaking of college, you just finished your junior year at Stanford. My senior year, I'm graduating. I'm oh, graduating. Man. Hey, I'm graduating in like six weeks. Well, what's it like to be for the other uh, college uh, seniors there to have a celebrity in class? Oh, nobody cares. I, I, I mean, I've been there four years. By now, it's like no one cares anymore. <laughs> They're, You're well, just friends. Absolutely, which plus, is good though. That's the best way to have it. Plus, you don't have any Secret Service following you around either, like another famous yeah, Stanford no, student. I don't have any Secret Service. I don't have any Secret Service. You have a derby pick for tomorrow, Fred? You know, it, it, it depends on the weather. You know, if it stays dry, you know, I like real quiet. I like favorite trick. But if it gets wet, you know, rock and roll, I'm a big fan of. Maybe, uh, maybe Cape Town if it gets wet. And then, you know, Rick Pitino's horse I'm always a big fan of, so. All right, well, Fred just named half of the 15-horse you know, field. So, so if I bet half the field, <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't lose, you know? You're just a little excited to be here in Derby Country. I Wait, let me tell you. I was in my hotel room. Like, we got here late. We're all tired. I'm like, oh, we're showering, kind of getting ready, kind of slow. And <laughs> you guys on TV were like, hey, we could be there right now. Like, we got to get dressed. we got to get there. So I'm very happy to be here right we now. We are so happy. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my well, pleasure. Well, have a good time. Get out there and enjoy it. I will. I definitely will. Thank Fred you. Savage, a star of NBC's Working. Right now, Tracy's with Tom Hammond. That's right. This guy is definitely having a great time, too, although you're more used to this atmosphere than Mr. Fred are you, Savage. Are you saying I'm old? I'm used to this. I've been to this a lot of times. I guess I have. Your voice sounds a little old tonight. Bad. It's bad news. Here I am shouting over this band, staying out too late and have to do a game on Sunday, so not very smart, but hopefully I'll recover. Shame on you, you wouldn't get fired for something like that? Probably, <laughs> not you mentioned it. I hadn't thought about that. No, tell me, how did you get this voice? Have you been really busy this past week or just screaming really loudly at the Oaks today? Yeah, I did two games last weekend and went all fall and winter without catching a cold and got a little cold. And the smartest thing to do was to come and shout over the band all night, so. Yeah. Now you've lived here in Lexington for how many years? Basically my whole life, and I'm not gonna tell you how many years that is, but a lot. And you're basically home base out of here, and then you fly out to your other engagement? Tomorrow at 7.15, I'll be on a plane out of here to go to wherever I'm going to do an NBA game, either to Salt Lake City or San Antonio. So, yeah, I'm on, I'm on those planes about 4 million miles on Delta. So. What an exciting life, though. Quickly, though, can you tell me, what does the Derby and this party tonight mean to you? What does the Derby what? What does it mean to you? This whole event. <laughs> I wish I could broadcast it sometime. That's one of my ambitions. ABC has it now. As a Kentuckian, it really means a lot to me. It's a time when everyone in the world that hears my old Kentucky home play as the horses come on the track can be a Kentuckian for that two minutes. To me, it epitomizes what our state is about. The Kentucky Derby is sort of a uh, no holds barred, anyone has a chance to win sort of thing. And I like that about our state. So I think it, it typifies our state. Well, we're proud of you and we hope you get a chance to do that. Thank you so much for your time here Thanks, tonight. Tracy. Thank you very much. Tom and Nancy, back to you. There's a lot more to come as we continue with our Derby Eve Party Studio 98. One hundred percent approved. One hundred percent approved. Because at Jerry Delaney's North Broadway Auto Sales, we don't run a credit check. Bankruptcy, bad credit, no credit, no problem.
Let's welcome back. Before we press ahead, we want to do thank Rides and Mr. Tuxedo for supplying the formal wear for our production crew tonight. They do a fantastic job. This, of course, is Studio 98, the biggest disco party in history, I would imagine. And what would that be without the greatest disco band in the world? Dash Rip Rock is the name. And as Sean McDowell shows us, not only do the guests enjoy the band, but the band enjoys the guests. It's Dash Rip Rock and the Dragons. You know, we get out and we jump around and we we entertain you. Come on, let's party. I heard somebody say, oh, baby, oh. Just go burn, oh, oh, baby, oh. And wow, do they party. Dash Rip Rock is a fixture at the Madden Derby party. His band has picked up a lot of different sounds. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. We play what we call party rock. We do all the greats. We do Elvis. We do the Blues Brothers in costume. We do uh, everything back to swing music and lots and lots of good old time rock and roll. We got eight people up there. Pretty girl, myself, kind of up front, but everybody sings a little bit. In the still. I love ballads because I've got a good voice for ballads, but you can't play ballads all night long. Dash and the band play about 50 shows a year. He's even played the main stage at the Texas State Fair, but the party of all parties is by far his favorite. We are just fun loving. I mean, we are there for the good time. And boy, does the band love this party, as who wouldn't? I mean, it's the greatest event anywhere all year, every year. So we're just proud to be here. job every year. Right now, folks, we have a, a repeat performance from I'm Kato Kalen. I'm getting pinched. Oh, oh it's my hand. Oh, oh stop that, stop that. Hand. Kato Kalen, America's most famous house guest, Used I guess we guess to say. Well, I'm actually working in movies now, so oh, I got wow. two films coming out in July. <laughs> What's well, that? I'm, no, I'm not a house guest anymore, right? <laughs> As Julie knows that. He's got, done he's with got that. some stuff going on. Yeah, well, that's right. Oh, dueling microphones. Hey, hey, you were here in 1996. Yeah. You had a great time. What Best do you think time. of it this year? Uh, my second home, Kentucky. I love it. I love it. I actually have relatives here in Kentucky. I do. I've got the old. Yes, I do. Such a good schmoozer. <laughs> Why do I get a sense that you're not buying anything he's saying? It's a little bronze spot on my nose Kato today. And he's very good. And if you look on his hand, his hand, the veins on his hands actually uh -oh. spell TV. He knows oh, how to man. work it. You see it? You, see you were born for it. I was born for TV. Well, downtown Julie but Brown, if you're at a party like this, you've got to have some gossip. It's your job. Oh, gossip. Oh, absolutely not. I think after this party, I think um, we'll have some tomorrow for the derby. But tonight, all I know is Cato is getting goosed left, right, and center, even as he's being interviewed here. Right is that? <laughs> careful, careful. Oh, <laughs> but it's fun. The people of Kentucky. Now, oh, man, it's a helicopter okay, coming. Oh, no, it means wind it up. We'll the wind, what are the Academy Awards? Um, <laughs> Aloma and Ailamanai. Aloma, Alumanai. Thank you guys. I, I can tell you're having a something good time. Something in Atlanta. You got to something horse. in Atlanta. That's right. That's right. What, are you well, what would I do without you? All of a sudden, you're my field producer. What this is great. Well, Julie. you see, this, this party raises money for the Bluegrass Boys Ranch oh, for disadvantaged see. young men. And right now, we're going to meet some alumni who live down in Atlanta. Hi, Atlanta. Go Braves. Why don't you tell me what you go on? Jarrett Edwards is a sophomore at Morehouse College in Atlanta. He sings in the Glee Club and sings the praises of the Bluegrass Boys Ranch. They're the ones that taught me, you know, the importance of studying, the importance that there, there, there are going to be people along the way that are going to help you. And I mean, that was really, really important to me. Jarrett grew up in Lexington, a good family, a good public elementary school, but not such a good neighborhood. That's where the Boys Ranch came in and helped a bright child. If they hadn't taken me out of that environment, I guess it would have been too easy for me to fall into like the traps that so many people, so many other people fall into. He was kept away from the traps and instead doors were opened. To actually have the opportunity, you know, to see the world, the people, I mean, get the education that I couldn't have got or I wouldn't have received if I had stayed in Lexington. It is a true blessing that these people actually took the time to give a little 
so that people that may not have, may not be as well off as them, you know, would have the chance, you know, to better themselves. And look where it's brought Jarrett to a place where now he gives back and looks forward to giving back even more. I know what it did for me and where it brought me to, like the fact that it got me like this far. I mean, that means a whole lot. Anything I can do to help that program, I'm gonna help them. Just because I realize what it's done and what it is doing. So you can see people are having a good time here, but it really does go for a much bigger and greater purpose, helping the young men at the Blue, Bluegrass Boys Ranch. Puts it all into perspective, oh, and keep in absolutely. mind that the budget for the Bluegrass Boys Ranch is all privately raised, and about two-thirds of that budget hopefully will be raised here tonight at this party. We'll be back in a moment. I'm Andrea. Welcome back to Studio 98, Madden Derby Eve party. Joining us now is Dick Kelly, the stepfather of President Bill Clinton. Mr. Kelly, thank you so much for being here tonight. I would imagine you've seen uh, plenty of wonderful, glamorous parties at the White House, I would imagine. How does Kentucky compare? Well, you know, uh, I, I just really enjoy coming to Kentucky. The people in Kentucky are, are wonderful people. They're kind of like Arkansas people. We just love everybody. And we have an old saying in Arkansas that, well, everybody in Arkansas is kin to everybody. That's and that's kind of the way I feel about Kentucky. That sounds like Kentucky. Long live the South. Huh? Well, I love Kentucky. What about, is this your first derby? No, no. I've been here. This is about my seventh or eighth oh, Kentucky wow. Derby. Okay. So you, I, I love it. You must have your pick lined up then. Oh, absolutely. What do you think? Huh? Who are you oh, picking? Oh, I can't tomorrow? run down the odds. No, I like, I like favorite trick. Yeah. Any insight on the horse the president might be picking tomorrow? You know there are people out there who might go with his pick. No, uh, you know I don't know. I don't know who the president would pick. He might. Uh, he might just draw numbers. That sounds like a good system. Thank he, you so much. He, he might do like I did one time. I just bet. I bet two dollars to win on the odd numbered horses, and one of them one paid forty-two dollars. Not I was bad. Rich. Not bad at all. Dick thank Kelly, you. thank you very much for visiting with yes, us. Thank you. Cruiser's got an interesting guest. We have found a guy who actually dressed within the flavor of tonight's disco party theme. This is Brendan. He's from Ireland. Came all the way from Ireland for the uh, Derby. And I love the outfit. Can you describe it for me? Uh, a friend of mine, I came over here. I'm on vacation at the moment, Cruiser. Yeah. And uh, I'm over for the Derby. Uh -huh. And we've got an Irish interest. And the horse's right. name Hanneman Highway. Yeah. And uh, he told me, why don't you go to the uh, Anita Madden party? Yeah. And he said the team this year is uh, yeah. is the Saturday. disco. Now, are you, are you getting chafed in this? Oh, yeah. Is that your real hair? You think so? He's like Ireland's answer to Huggy Bear, Tom and Nancy, from Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> Dave, thank you very much. You know, all night we have been talking about the 100th anniversary of historic Hamburg Place. And it's been a rich and marvelous 100 years here for Hamburg Place. But now we think about what's going to happen in the next 100 years. I want you to meet the new generation whose hopes and dreams rest in Hamburg Place. We just moved into a new house. Um, we don't have the nursery ready yet. So, as you know, we have lots to think about. Life is busy right now. Life for is you. very busy. <laughs> Any day, Patrick and Jennifer Madden are expecting a baby girl, the fifth generation of Hamburg Place. But it's much different from the farm that baby's great great grandfather founded in 1898. Today, there's development on the once green rolling pastures, shopping centers. Homes and apartments will soon follow, eventually a golf course and estates. Patrick Madden is the heir to the Madden legacy and the family's attorney. He believes his great-grandfather would be proud of this development. He was a trader. I mean, and that's how he made his money, and that's how he made his living. That's where he got the money to purchase Hamburg Place, was by trading horses. And if he could have uh, gotten the, the type of uh, deals that we're, we're getting now, he would have been real glad to do it. It's still not clear yet if the Maddens will one day develop all of Hamburg Place. 
the economics of raising horses on land situated where this farm is don't make sense anymore. Uh, and that's witnessed further by the fact that they've run an interstate through the middle of the farm, they've run man -of war through the farm. As for concerns about development raging out of control in the bluegrass. I don't see the, the green around Lexington being absorbed in four or five generations. And that's important to the Maddens for the community they love and the daughter they'll raise. We just wanted to know everything about Hamburg Place and all the people that have um, lived and worked here for generations. Well, right now we want to say a very special happy birthday to Hamburg Place. You can hear the excitement with the confetti and the explosion marking the 100th anniversary of Hamburg Place. Our thanks to Disc Jockey Records and thank you for watching.